Howdy folks, and welcome back to Fractured Space, The Mighty Jingles. I've been mostly showcasing games that I don't normally devote an awful lot of time to this week, with the exception of Cold Waters, but games like XCOM 2, Heliborn, and now Fractured Space, while browsing the emails that you guys send in to me by the hundreds for some choice World of Tanks and World of Warships content coming up next week. A lot of the games that we like to play are jumping on board the Halloween bandwagon at the moment. World of Warships in particular has an absolutely amazing Halloween event going on. Nevertheless, it did come as a little bit of a surprise when I got an email from Fractured Space announcing that Halloween was just around the corner and something wicked this way comes. So, with my curiosity aroused, I thought, let's have a look. What's all this about? The Fractured Space Halloween event is PvP only, it's not available in cooperative battle. Which meant that I was going to have to put my ass on the line and run the risk of it taking a savage kicking before I could see what was actually going on with this whole Fractured Space Halloween thing. Nevertheless, it's only pride, I don't have much anyway, so I didn't really have an awful lot to lose. They have a team pick system in the matchmaking lobby in Fractured Space. It's very similar to the way it works in Overwatch, for example, where you can have a look at what the enemy team have picked and change your loadout accordingly. If your team is low on tanks, you can pick a tank. If your team's low on support ships, you can pick a support ship and customise the loadout while you're sitting there waiting for the game to start. This match had all the hallmarks of one that wasn't going particularly well at the start. I got taken out quite early in my... United Space Research Colossus and the enemy fleet very very early on had actually made it to our home base but just as my respawn timer kicked in I jumped back to the home base in order to defend and this guy decided he didn't like the odds took cover behind the superstructure of the station to shield him from my massed batteries of flat guns and ran away like the craven dog he is. Which was actually probably a very sensible thing to do. So, base defended. Now what? Well, we're going to have to shut down enemy access to our home base, otherwise this match could be over very, very soon. And to do that, we're going to have to recapture the southernmost gateway station in the Alpha sector. So I'm jumping to Alpha. We do already have one ship on the team in there, but it's only one ship. And, well, you can never have too much backup. So I've arrived in Alpha, teammate up ahead has already retaken possession of the gateway station, so we're not in any immediate danger of having the base attacked again. Surprisingly, I'm not seeing any enemy ships in this sector, with just two of us here. They could relatively easily regain control of the gateway station and make another assault on our base, but, well, I'm certainly not complaining. There does appear to be quite a bit of enemy activity over in the beta sector, but we've got three ships over there that appear to have the situation in hand, so we're going to get to work shooting down these enemy transports and collecting resources and capping the mining stations in this sector, which is also going to generate resources for the team so we can upgrade our ships, while keeping an eye out for enemy activity. We haven't spotted anything yet, but that doesn't mean there's nothing here. They could be lurking in wait behind the asteroids. Oh, enemy ship. Oh, bugger. Well, I could be in trouble here. The allied ship with me is jumping out. And the destroyer has the range advantage over me. He's got, well, I'm definitely inside his gun range. And he's not inside my gun range. My flat cannons do a lot of damage, but only at close range. They only have a range of around about six and a half kilometers. So I'm taking cover behind this station so he doesn't have a direct line of fire on me. And I can hit him with my missiles. They have a range of around about 12 and a half kilometers, but I can't spam the missiles at him, and he can spam his main guns at me. He's launched bombers. Two of my team are busy respawning. There's no backup on the way, so I'm not gonna win this fight. So I'm gonna get out of here. Also, the team's collected enough resources that I now have an upgrade available, so I may as well go and collect it. Let's jump to our home base. And the timing was actually pretty good because the enemy team have just managed to win the fight and beat the sector and they've opened up access to our home base again. So there could be an enemy attack on the way. And I'm now in the perfect position to defend against it. But Gamma Sector is going to be online in 60 seconds. Now the team that occupies and controls the Gamma Sector when it's online 
get a massive combat buff. And that combat buff is so good that what tends to happen is that when Gamma does become available, everybody drops what they're doing and they go and fight for it. Now the Colossus is better at taking damage than dishing damage out. So I'm thinking while everybody's squabbling over Gamma, I might be able to get some more sneaky mining station captures up, but that destroyer is still in the sector. Gamma's online in 20 seconds, so that plan isn't going to work. I'm going to take cover behind the shield of this station, and I'm going to join the rest of the team in Gamma. Spooling up the jump drives, and it's just as I'm jumping into Gamma that something strange happens. I'm picking up a distress call from Beta Sector. That's not something that's ever happened before. Maybe this is something to do with a Halloween event. Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, we're fighting for control of Gamma. The good news for me, since I'm in the Colossus, is that you can't actually capture Gamma unless you've got ships inside the station perimeter. So enemy ships using their long-range weaponry and hanging around at the back are not actually doing any good for their team here. Which means that I can actually get close enough to start doing serious amounts of damage with the flat cannons on the Colossus. Looks like we've got that destroyer on the back foot now. He's taking concentrated fire from a number of friendly ships. Yeah, he's going down. Not a problem. Yeah, you don't like it at close range, do you, pal? <laughs> that was satisfying. Friendly Raider's taken fire. Let's go for this guy. Oh, no way, he's shielded. Waste of time. Let's take that protector out instead. He's on very low health. And we've secured Gamma. Right. Massive combat buff now available for the team for a limited time. Um, and the enemy ships are either dead or jumping out. Let's see if we can take out that pioneer before he manages to no. know. Well, we did some increased damage to him while his jump drive was spooling up, but he made it out of there. So, we've got Gamma, we've got the combat buff. Now, that distress call was still active in beta while we were fighting for domination of Gamma. And now that we've secured Gamma, I think it's high time I jumped over to beta to find out exactly what the hell is going on. Right, we've arrived in beta. All stations standing down from jump stations. Where's this distress call? Oh, there it is. It's like a beacon with a hologram. Oh, crap. Enemy ships. Oh, it's that bloody destroyer again, and he's still outside of the range of my flat cannon, so, yeah, great. I, as you can see, am definitely well in range of his medium-range weapon. And I'm so busy attempting to deal with the threat posed by this destroyer that I don't notice that a new sector has now appeared on the map once I got close enough to this distress beacon. I am in a bad spot here. I mean, I have backup here. I'm not fighting this destroyer off alone. But the destroyer isn't alone either. There's a protector just joined him. And I'm going to switch my fire at the protector and try to take him down. And hopefully take enough damage. Because let's face it, taking damage is exactly what the Colossus is for. But my team will be able to finish both of these guys off. After they've finished giving me the kicking of my life. And those two friendly ships with me have taken the Protector out, which means that the Destroyer is now doomed. He's outnumbered and outgunned. So, I wait out my respawn timer and then I plot a jump to this new sector that's just opened up. There is a bit of a fight for dominance in Beta at the moment. The enemy team are pushing on the Gateway Station. Uh, that will allow them to attack our home base, but the ships on the team over in Beta have managed to beat off that attack, so our home base isn't in any immediate danger. And this new sector has a very, very limited visibility, but I can see some kind of combat happening over there, so I fire up the boost, and what the hell is that? Ship's identified as the Charon, and it's a Colossus, although it's not like the Colossus I'm flying. I wish my Colossus could take the kind of beating that this thing can take. It doesn't appear to be on the enemy team, but it's definitely not on my team either. And thanks to the limited visibility in this sector, I'm able to get close enough to put these flat cannons to work as well as my plasma drones and my missile launchers. This thing is taking one hell of a beat. I think the entire team has now jumped into this sector and we're all shooting the crap out of this thing. Now this is a very, very risky strategy because with the entire team here, we're basically handing control of the map to the enemy team. However, the team that manages to kill this Colossus, as well as receiving a drop pod after the game, gains a huge amount of resources. 
So despite the fact, and you can see that enemy ships on the map have just popped up into the Gamma sector, so even if the enemy team do win control of Gamma when it becomes available, because we're all here, blasting the shit out of this Halloween ship, and Gamma will be online in less than a minute. The fact that we are going to get so many resources for knocking this ship out is going to allow us to upgrade our ships to a degree where the fact that we don't actually have control of Gamma, and we don't have the Gamma combat buff, isn't going to be such a negative factor. We just need to kill this thing. <laughs> Come on! Yes! Allied team destroyed the Charon. 8,000 resources. New upgrades available. And Gamma is not yet online, so we can still jump from here to Gamma. And if we can stop the enemy team from gaining control of Gamma, we get that combat buff, as well as a massive injection of resources from destroying the Halloween ship which should put us so far ahead that it's going to be very, very difficult for us to screw this up and lose. Unfortunately for me, well, I'm the first ship to jump into Gamma, so I'm immediately the object of the entire enemy team's attention, and not everybody else on the team jumped into Gamma at the same time. Some of them headed back to the home base in order to pick up that upgrade before coming here, but... Well, as long as they're shooting at me, they're not shooting at the rest of the ships on my team, and... Getting shot at is what the Colossus is for, after all, so now I have to wait out that respawn timer. Luckily, however, the rest of the team were doing a fantastic job in blocking the enemy team from actually gaining control of that central sector. So, by the time my respawn timer was back up, I'm able to jump straight back into the fight, with control of Gamma still very much on the table. We've got two surviving friendly ships in this sector, they have both taken damage, and it looks like there are only two enemy ships here. There's our old friend and the destroyer again, and he's been backed up by a protector, but I'm now inside the capture perimeter of the Gamma Station, and we are winning control. I just need to get close enough to actually put my guns to use. Alright, we're doing some damage to the destroyer, but the protector is really the one that I should be focusing on. He's got far less health and it's far easier to kill. And also, he's protecting, because he's a protector, so he's protecting the destroyer. Oh, and we've got control of Gamma, so we now have the combat buff, and the protector is down. We now have four friendly ships in this sector, and that destroyer has just run out of friends. And he's close enough that... He no longer has the firepower advantage now that I'm able to bring my flat cannons to bear on him. So I'm rotating the hull of the ship to keep fresh armor pointing towards him to reduce the amount of incoming damage. And he's trying to jump out because he knows he's onto a loser, but he left it too late and we got it. So we now have the combat buff and the enemy base is wide open. However, I might have just jumped the gun a little here and bitten off more than I can chew because I'm the only ship on the team that's taken advantage of the opportunity to attack the enemy base. We've got one ship in Alpha, and I don't know what he's doing there, because the gateway station in Alpha was never in any danger, and we have three ships that are still hanging around in Gamma, which is an elaborate way of saying, I am screwed. And now that I'm dead, here they are. Yep, the cavalry's finally arrived. <laughs> well, better late than never, I suppose. And they do have the combat buff, and there are now three of them here. It would have been better if there'd been four of them here. Or even five of them here. I don't know what that guy is doing over in the Alpha Sector. It looks like he's trying to capture the Gateway Station so he can jump into the enemy base. But he never needed to. If he'd been in Gamma with the rest of the team, he could have jumped straight from there. So I'm just sitting waiting for the respawn countdown. And hoping I can get in here quick enough to join in the victory celebrations. But the team are kicking so much ass without me that I don't think I'm going to make it in time. Jump drive spooling up. Nope. Oh well, never mind. GG, well played. A win is a win. And that's the Halloween event in Fractured Space. It's available in player versus player combat only, so you can't play conquest mode against the AI and take advantage of the Halloween event. It actually went live on Wednesday, but those cheeky little monkeys at Fractured Space didn't bother announcing it until Thursday, <laughs> which left a lot of players scratching their heads and wondering what the hell's this distress call? I didn't see anything in the patch notes. But that's how it works. But Jingles, what's in the drop pod that you won for taking down the ghost ship? Good question, glad you asked. Every time a team successfully manages to take down the ghost ship, they win one of these drop pods, which contain a legendary crew member.
Do it 10 times and you win a limited edition drop pod. Now, what's in the limited edition drop pod? I have absolutely no idea. I haven't got a clue. I've only actually managed to get this done once in time to get this video up for Friday. But that is the Halloween event for Fractured Space. It does add some interesting possibilities to the outcome of a PvP match, because are you all going to go for this ghost ship and get the resource injection from killing it and the drop pod reward after the battle? And if you do, what happens when both enemy teams are fighting to be the one to actually get the kill on the ghost ship? Are you going to join forces so you take it down faster and hope that you're on the team that gets the killing blow and the reward? Or are you going to be fighting each other while that ghost ship is tearing you all a new one? <laughs> or are you going to ignore it completely and just concentrate on dominating the map while the enemy team are chasing after the ghost ship? All kinds of opportunities for your team to all have a violent disagreement and all go chasing off in three separate different directions, ensuring that none of you get anything done. Anyway, that's my new crew member, a legendary Zerid Greyfist tactical officer, to go with the legendary Mighty Jingles captain that I have on my crew. Zerid Greyfist, of course, is a YouTuber who specialises in doing Fractured Space videos, so congratulations, Zerid. You made it into the game. You're in very good company. That's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.